Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and back there is Cindy Oliver and she's a trainee scientist and if you follow me on Twitter you can have a look at some of her science experiments. In this video we will be looking at yet another example of how Dr. Asim Malhotra has misrepresented data in his ongoing crusade against vaccines. In this case, the data he is representing is a report from the British Heart Foundation looking at excess cardiac mortality during the pandemic. Let's have a look. This is what Malhotra tweeted. This is a heartbreaking watch. Yesterday, the British Heart Foundation announced 30,000 excess cardiac deaths in England multifactorial for sure, but we now have mechanistic RCT and associational data linking the mRNA product to cardiovascular events. It's likely a primary driver. And underneath this tweet was an extremely poor taste video, primarily featuring, featuring people who had recently died. The intention is to try to link these tragedies to the vaccine, even though in most cases there is no evidence the person was even vaccinated, let alone that it led to their death. Particularly egregious is the inclusion of this poor girl here, who literally died from COVID complications on the day she was due to get her first. COVID vaccine. The video attempts to imply that she got the vaccine and that is what killed her. But if you read the newspaper article, it is clear that she died from acute myocarditis associated with COVID-19 before she could get the vaccine. Attempting to link an actual COVID death in a young girl with a vaccine that she never got is a new low. Of course, attempting to link unrelated deaths to the vaccine is nothing new. Many others have done it in the past. And if you want to know why their claims don't hold water, I've made a video about it and I'll provide a link to it in this video's description. But what about the British Heart Foundation report that Malhotra quoted? Does this in any way support his claim? Let's have a look. This is the report here. It's called Tipping Point, and the subheading is Why Heart Care Must Be Prioritised Now. And these are the key findings of the report, and I'll just read them out to you. From the beginning of the pandemic to August 2022, there have been just over 30,000 excess deaths involving ischemic heart disease, IHD, in England. IHD is the most common type of heart and circulatory disease. It is caused by narrowed arteries and can ultimately lead to a heart attack. In addition, there have been thousands more excess deaths involving other heart or circulatory conditions, such as heart failure or cerebrovascular disease, or known as stroke. Since the pandemic began, heart and circulatory diseases have consistently been a major driver of the overall excess mortality trend. This consistent level of excess mortality involving heart and circulatory diseases is unique and not in keeping with what we have seen with other condition-specific causes of death, such as dementia and cancer. This suggests that two and a half years following the start of the pandemic, the health system still has not recovered and adapted sufficiently to meet the needs of heart patients. So straight away we see two things that contradict Malhotra's claims. Firstly, the 30,000 excess cardiac related deaths are for the whole of the pandemic. They are not just since people were vaccinated. Secondly, they are deaths involving ischemic heart disease or IHD for short. 
IHD is essentially our condition in which the heart is starved of oxygen due to our reduced blood supply. Most commonly, this is due to our buildup of plaque in the wall of one or more of the arteries supplying blood to the heart. As the plaque enlarges, it gradually obstructs the flow of blood, which deprives the heart of oxygen and nutrients. Most importantly, though, IHD is a condition that takes years to develop, so it would be quite impossible for recent vaccination to be the cause. It would be useful, though, to look at the data by year so we can see if IHD mortality increased or decreased after vaccination. This information isn't included in the British Heart Foundation report, but they do state that they have used the data from the Office for Health Improvement and Disparities. And that data can be downloaded from this website and analysed, which is what I've done. Now, the BHF report uses data up until the end of August 2022, but it's now available until the third week of September. So I've included the extra three weeks data. So, first of all, if we look at the totality of the data, we can see that there are 30,425 excess IHD deaths altogether. And this translates to an excess IHD death rate of 232.2 per week. 12,117 of those excess deaths occurred in 2020. And these happened over a period of 41 weeks, which translates to an excess IHD death rate of 295.5 per week which is, of course, higher than the excess death rate over the whole pandemic. In 2021, which is the year that people were progressively vaccinated in the UK, the IHD excess death rate reduced to 242 per week. And now in 2022, the excess IHD death rate is down to 161.9 per week. So basically, the numbers are showing the exact opposite of what Dr. Malhotra is claiming. IHD excess death rates were highest in the pandemic year before vaccination and lowest now when the majority of people in England have been vaccinated. But there is still an excess IHD death rate of 161.9 per week in 2022, which is unacceptably high. So what's the cause? Well, that's what the BHF report looks at. And it's a pretty sobering report. Now, the report does recognise that there is growing evidence that people with previous COVID infection have a higher risk of developing subsequent cardiovascular disease, but it also identifies a number of other issues that are contributing to excess cardiac mortality. The first key contributing issue is what the report refers to as missing patients and lost opportunities to manage risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And some examples of this were 43% of heart patients who needed medical treatment for their heart condition over the past year have put off seeking NHS help. And the primary reason for this was to avoid putting pressure on the NHS. Some also avoided seeking treatment owing to ongoing fears of catching COVID. In some cases, patients had the option taken away from them. 20% of heart patients have had an appointment for their heart condition cancelled over the last year. And it's not just existing heart patients. The pandemic also led to the cancellation of existing programs designed to identify potential heart patients. For instance, the NHS Health Check Program was suspended 
early in the pandemic and still has not returned to pre-pandemic levels. The next key contributor to excess mortality, which the report identified, was that more patients are waiting longer for life-saving heart tests and treatments. And they illustrate this with the experience of Tamsin, which I'll read out to you. Tamsin 45 from Essex has been experiencing chest pain and breathlessness since May 2022, impacting her job as a dance teacher. She's worried. Heart disease runs through her family. Her late mother had her first heart attack when she was just 38, and her cousin died recently of a heart attack. She found it difficult to get her symptoms taken seriously and had trouble getting a GP appointment. Now she's been waiting nearly two months for an appointment at the Rapid Access Chest Pain Clinic when she should have been seen urgently. All the while, her health is getting worse and she is struggling with stress and anxiety in light of her devastating family history. This really struck a chord with me because I know from personal experience that NHS GPs not taking symptoms seriously is not unusual. I have lost two uncles to cancer because their initial symptoms were dismissed as having benign causes by their NHS GPs and not investigated further. By the time the cancer was diagnosed, it was too late. These are, of course, just anecdotes, but there is hard data that shows the pandemic has had a devastating effect on waiting times for people waiting for heart procedures. This figure shows the number of patients waiting for heart procedures for over one year. In an ideal world, the number should always be zero. But as you can see, not only has the number never been zero, but since the pandemic, it has skyrocketed and is continuing to increase. And of course, there are many more people waiting unacceptably long waiting times of less than a year. By the end of August 2022, there were a record 346,000 people waiting for heart care. And having to wait for, for procedures is not only stressful for patients, but can also have serious health implications for them. The final thing the BHF report identified as contributing to excess mortality was the fact that heart patients are waiting too long for an ambulance and other emergency services. This figure shows ambulance waiting times for category two calls. And a category two call is defined as a serious condition such as stroke or chest pain, which may require rapid assessment and or urgent transport. And their aim for these calls is to respond to 90% of them within 40 minutes, which to me seems like a pretty pathetic aim. But as you can see, since May 2021, they haven't even met this lowly aim. The blue line represents the 90 percentile for calls, and it is way over 40 minutes. Interestingly, in September 2021, Malhotra blamed his father's tragic death on these delays and said he would have almost certainly survived if the ambulance wasn't delayed. Now he has changed his tune and he claims that his father's death was a result of the vaccine, despite there being no evidence to support his claim. There is considerable evidence, however, that high cholesterol levels lead to heart disease, something that Dr. Malhotra chooses not to believe. The delays to ambulances getting to patients are mirrored in delays throughout the entire emergency care pathway and have had devastating consequences. The Royal College of Emergency Medicine estimates that overcrowding and extreme delays in emergency services 
led to 4,519 excess deaths in England over 12 months in 2020-21. So the British Heart Foundation have identified a number of real issues that are leading to an increase in cardiac mortality, none of which are related to vaccines. Indeed, when we look at the data, we see that the excess cardiac mortality has actually decreased since vaccines were introduced, despite the increasing strains on the NHS. So Malhotra's claims that the BHF data supports mRNA vaccines being a likely primary driver are just his usual bollocks. As are the similar claims being suggested by his new mate, Dr. John Campbell. Let's hope that the BHF report is taken seriously and the necessary changes are made to the NHS to ameliorate these issues. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.